Hey everyone, welcome back to another FSD Beta 10.12.2 video. I've got a good one for you today, a follow up to my last video where the car drove like a maniac. If you haven't seen it yet, I've linked it in the description below, so definitely watch it before this one to see what happened. This video is testing the same loop in three different FSD modes, assertive, average, and chill. We see some super interesting results, so this will definitely become a staple testing location for future builds. Can't wait to see how it does on 10.13. As a refresher, there's a disconnect on this route between navigation data and real world navigation. We start our drive in the red arrow on San Pablo Ave. Tesla's navigation thinks we take a right from San Pablo onto Hopkins, when in actuality, we turn right onto Cedar and then a left onto Hopkins. The car ended up jolting itself right to continue on Cedar and rerouted. This threw the car off in assertive mode last video and was super jarring as a passenger, so this time we're testing the same route but with assertive, average, and chill modes. Big shout out to Av8, one of my YouTube subscribers, for the suggestion. All of your support has been incredible the last couple months, especially the last week. The channel has grown a ton and it's super exciting to see. As always, if you enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you all enjoy the video. All right, so we're starting today on Assertive. We're gonna see how the car does. I will engage it in the same position and then we'll see what happens. All right, let's see how it goes. I think we have a big opportunity on the left here. Okay, same situation. Oh, no, actually, okay, the car got into the right lane this time. And I think that was because last time there was a, a car in the right lane uh, stopped at the crosswalk, so the car may have actually gone into the left lane there. Here's our right turn onto Cedar, not Hopkins. As you saw there, it said Hopkins, but we're actually turning right onto Cedar. So, an aggressive, or assertive. Yep, okay, same thing, except this time, and I think because there was a lead car, it actually, it actually uh, committed to the right a little bit earlier. Um, okay, that's interesting. Uh, we'll go around the block and, and try it again here. So, same behavior on Assertive. Um, definitely interesting to see, but that feels like navigation uh, navigation issue because we are taking a right onto Cedar, we're not taking a right onto uh, Hopkins. And so when it, when it reads that it needs to continue taking a right onto Hopkins, um, it should actually be taking a left onto Hopkins. So, Really interesting behavior there. All right, folks, test number two, this time on average. We'll see how it does. Assertive was the same behavior, but a little less uh, hectic and chaotic. So uh, let's do it. Wow, that time, okay, that time it just committed and it went into the left lane, interestingly. So that was, uh, behavior from assertive but this time on average and on assertive this past time it got into the right lane so not not exactly sure what that was about um, okay we actually have the exact same situation here where we have to stop for the red light um, which is what happened the other day uh, okay I think we have an opportunity here to take a right on red and the car will commit okay yeah that that was uh, <laughs> that behavior there was more like uh, the assertive from uh, from the other day. So, yeah, it's it's definitely. I think it's you know I, what's making sense to me right now is that it's a navigation issue, um, and I talked about it in the video. Uh, but but again, it's and I'll try to explain it again in, in the video I make comparing all three uh, chill, assertive, and, and average here. Um, but when you take a right, so so when we come out of, uh, you know, where we start the drive there, we take a right onto a street called San Pablo Ave. And in the right we take off of San Pablo is, the navigation thinks it's onto Hopkins Street, but in actuality, it's onto Cedar Street. And so what happens is the car still thinks we need to take a right onto Hopkins, um, but Hopkins is really kind of a, a left uh, from Cedar. 
And so the FSD gets confused and, and is like, wait, I, I think I'm supposed to be going left here, but navigation's telling me to go right. So I think navigation is basically overriding FSD's ability to navigate in the real world. Um, and that's something that, that Tesla's working on right now. I think 10.13 is supposed to have more, uh, like less reliance on navigation uh, and more understanding of kind of the world around FSD and, and what it's supposed to do. So it'll be interesting to test this in 10.13 and see if there's any major difference. Cause this is, you know, this is pretty odd behavior. All right, we're gonna test again with chill in a sec. All right, so as you can see, this is test three out of three. We're on chill, chill now to see how it does. Let's let's do it. Wow, the car just oh my god, the car just committed there. Uh, didn't even didn't even look. I I knew it was safe to go, um, so I let the car do its thing. But definitely needs to stop there. And I think that's more of, more of a user error issue than anything. But as you noticed, it got into the left lane, uh, whereas assertive didn't, uh, but average did. So. All right, again, another slightly different maneuver here. We actually have a lead car that we're waiting for to take a right. So we will get uh, a right on green here, most likely. Actually, wow, we're going around. That's, I have not seen this behavior before. This is a, this is an assertive move on chill mode. And uh, you got some cars taking a left here, so we can't go, we need to stop. Um, we have a pedestrian on the right as well. Um, okay, so we need to wait. Good, the car's waiting, which is good behavior here. And now we're now we're committing. Uh, this is chill mode. Okay, interesting. What's gonna happen here? Wow. Okay, I might have to do chill again because it actually did the right thing this time. Um, and I'm pushing it through here because I don't know what it's stopping for. Uh, it actually did the right thing, but as you saw, there were cars on the right, so it actually had an extra second to think about what it wanted to do. I don't know if that's, um, if that was at all related to, to chill mode, but we're gonna do this one more time to, to get a definitive answer here. Well, not definitive per se, but at least get um, another data point. All right, so we got chill mode one final time here. One final time, and we'll see how it does. Chill actually did it right the last time, but that was probably because of uh, more to do with external forces than internal ones. All right, so the car is actually stopping and waiting this time, uh, making sure it has some visibility. We do have a big opportunity to go, so take that whenever it wants. We're getting into the left lane, which is what Jill did last time. Uh, we actually have a couple bikers here in the right lane, so, and a red light coming up. Um, so, I don't know, yeah, I don't know what the car's doing, but we need to, we need to just slow down and, and wait here. Um, I'm actually gonna disengage because in this case, it's, it's best just to wait for these bikers. Um, but I'll re-engage now and hopefully we get behind the bikers and okay cool it looks like we're moving behind the bikers uh, no need to go around them just be patient here cool okay we'll just wait here for the green light all right so here's the green light we should be moving up now and let's see what chill mode does. I think we have an opportunity on the right to really see what's gonna happen here. All right, chill mode, it's committing. Wow, wow. Chill mode decided to go left and that was that was exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, that's super interesting. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to say there. Um, Maybe it's just the fact that it has an extra fraction of a second because it's not accelerating as quickly. I mean, I don't know the, the metrics behind chill, average and assertive. Um, I would assume chill accelerates uh, a little bit slower than assertive. So 
it has that extra time, but that, that I could just be assuming that, and that may not actually be true. Um, so really, really fascinating. I'm actually gonna leave it on chill um, for the rest of this drive, because as, as you saw, if you watched the whole video, uh, we, we had a couple close calls uh, one with a, a center barrier um, got, you know, there was a biker. I think that was a bit of a fluke, um, but we came probably within six inches of hitting hitting it or scraping our the left side of the car on it. So we'll see what happens uh, around there again. And then also when we were doing the, the infamous roundabout, we, uh, to me, it felt like we were gonna go over the curb even though uh, there were a couple comments saying, are you sure you were going to? And it, it really felt like we were, so, excuse me. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah, let's, wait, we don't need to have the, the right turn signal on here. Yeah, we're going even further right than we did last time in this case. So we technically don't have the right of way here, um, but the car was really good to just find its way in. That's the barrier right there that we came pretty close to last time. Um, in some other drives, we've seen the car uh, change lanes, tried changing lanes into the left here. Uh, we'll see if the car does it this time. No, it seems to be going straight, no problem. And here's the roundabout that I always talk about. Gives the car trouble. We'll see how it does on chill because I've never actually tried it on chill before. Um, pulled into the roundabout just fine. We need to be going left here. It takes a really, really... Okay, my God, I let it, I let it do its thing. Um, I don't know if you're able to see the, the right, um, the right mirror there. Uh, and we might be able to visualize it there, but I think we were uh, maybe an inch or two away from going off the curb. Um, I won't let the car do that again, but I did want to see if it, 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 you know, how close it would get, and it got, it got too close for comfort. As you saw, the car performed differently between the three modes, and it actually made the correct decisions early on with chill mode, something I was definitely not expecting. I'd been skeptical on the differences between the three modes, but now that I've experienced this, I think it's safe to say they do all drive slightly differently. I'd love it, however, if Tesla made it more clear what those differences were between the three regarding acceleration, decision making, and general driving preferences. As always, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.